Hi, and welcome to Dave Barlow Guitar. And today, I've got a really bad cold. But anyway, I'm gonna do this video. So, um, uh, really interesting story. Got some riffage for you, that's coming up. But um, I got a little story for you, and I wanna show you uh, a pedal I picked up, it's pretty cool. Anyway, so as you know, I have, uh, I purchased this Mua Baby Bomb a little while ago. Uh, and I've got a video about it, uh, showing you what it can do on its own. Now, at the time, um, I just didn't have enough money to buy a um, to buy the Moore preamp model that you that you can have in front of these. And I was listening on YouTube, and I couldn't decide whether I wanted to purchase the uh, the um, the number two model, which is um, uh, the the kind of like JCM nine hundred kind of rip off, or or the uh, the Eddie Van Halen preamp model, uh, the five fifty five oh three, I think it's called, or something like that. But anyway, it's. Uh, uh, these are these are preamps by Moore. I think they're digital preamps, and I like the sound of them on on, uh, on YouTube. I was listening to loads of different YouTube channels, as you do, uh, and they sounded great, uh, really, really good. Um, however, I couldn't decide between the two, like I say. Anyway, so I went to a really nice shop in Guildford called Anderton's. Um, uh, they're a great shop, by the way. Uh, just so I could go down there, try out these pedals, uh, and choose the one I like, which is pretty much easy to do. So I got there, and a really nice guy uh, I spoke to there. He put me in a booth. Uh, he put these two pedals, uh, and we 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 immediately uh, tried out the uh, the the kind of the Marshall JCM 900 style uh, preamp model and the clean channel. It was amazing. It sounded phenomenally good. Uh, and then when we hit the over the the overdrive button on it. Um, I can't show you because I didn't purchase it, but I'm telling you the story, right? So you, you, you hit the overdrive uh, button on it, and it just sounded like a sack of shit to me. Um, in that room, it just didn't sound like it would even cut through, you know, a mix in your bedroom, let alone, you know, anywhere else. So I thought a bit, I, I felt a bit disappointed considering how good the, uh, the, 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 the clean channel on that was. So we tried the, the Eddie Van Halen, uh, the kind of 5503, I think they call it. We tried that one, and yeah, that was the same. Really, it just uh, to me, it just didn't sound right. I mean, sometimes you know, you, you buy, you watch a YouTube video, and you buy these things, and uh, and for, and, for, and you buy them in, and you, you know, you make a mistake, and and, and, I, and I'm glad I didn't make that mistake. I went and tried them out in a shop. So shops are good for these things. So you know, go to your shop, try these things out, even if you don't buy them. Um, I'll try to try something else out, but that's, uh, I'll talk about that in another video. Anyway, so uh, I was kind of disappointed. I was sitting in the booth and the guy was looking at me. He was really helpful. And he's going, well, look, man. He said, look, I, I, I use one of these in my rig. Have you tried one before? And I said, well, what is it? And he said, well, well, it's not a, it's not a, a Moore preamp pedal. It, it, it's called a Golden Plexi. It's like this. This is what it is. It's called a Golden Plexi, right? So I've got it in my hand. So, you know, I purchased it, right? But the thing is, I stuck this in the front. And it sounded immediately. We pressed, we just pressed the on button, and it sounded amazing. And then we fiddle around with the knobs. No matter what you do with the knobs, apart from pulling the tone all the way down, it sounds amazing. So I'm thinking, well, okay, fair enough. So I didn't buy uh, a Moore preamp pedal, which are supposed to go with the Moore Baby Bomb. Um, so I got these two. So now I have these two, right? So uh, and they sound fucking awesome, right? So, just, I want to recap this. This costs, this costs, I don't know, 90 quid. Uh, I think, yeah, about 90 quid. And this, guess how much this cost? 36 pounds. As opposed to a preamp modeler, which costs 95 pounds. And this sounds better. Right, so, in my eyes, anyway. In my eyes, it sounds better. So, the problem is, right, I'm going to give you a sound test of these two together through a 4x12 cabinet. Because I think, you know, that'll sound great. And, and with a distance mic. Not, not a closed up mic, a distance mic. So you can hear the whole thing breathing, right? Okay, so the gear we're going to use. Uh, we're going to use this MG74. Which I have um, uh, set fire to. So anyway, I can explain it really. It's, uh, it's not its original finish. This is uh, Daddy's finish. Um, I get, it's got some different pickups in it. Uh, these are, if I remember rightly, these are, what are they called? Damn it. These are called Steam Hammers by Iron Gear uh, in the bridge and the neck position. And uh, it's kind of like, you know, maple neck. It kind of sounds quite, sort of, it's got a super strat kind of sound to it. It just sounds kind of, it's got a strat y kind of overtones to it. Um, running into the Moore Baby Bomb, uh, like I showed you just now, uh, and using the Golden Plexi by Tone City, which I bought from Anderton's, from that nice brummy chap. 
uh, and also I'm going to run it through a Black Star 4 by 12 cabinet. It has got this 4 by 12 cabinet. Uh, it, it's kind of a little bit special, I must admit. So I might be cheating a little bit. Uh, it's got it's got two um, uh, vintage 30s in it and two uh, uh, Celestial 75s in it. So you kind of like get a bit of a both worlds. Kind of you get that kind of like you know bottom end from the 75s and that kind of like mid range edginess that you get from the. Uh, from the vintage 30s, so yeah, uh, yeah, um, so yeah, it's kind of, kind of a nice cabinet. Um, what am I doing? Oh yeah, and I'm just going into a microphone. This is um, this is a, a Pro Sound microphone I got from Maplins. So uh, or you know, I don't know. It was really cheap, but it sounds okay when I talk into it. So I'm assuming it's all right for this. Used it, used it before, so uh, seems to work. The, the the whole idea, the whole concept to this, okay, is I don't want a close mic. I want you to hear what it sounds like when you're kind of like a couple of feet away from the speakers you know three or four feet away from the speakers because that's what an amp sounds like an amp doesn't sound like we ear to the speaker code what you hear when you play your amp is what comes out of the amp you know a, a few feet afterwards so um, I never understand the concept of you know showing somebody how showing somebody on YouTube how something works by making it up I mean I know it solves a lot of problems in a way but it's not really true to the amp sound so just for the argument's sake, that's what I'm doing, okay? So, um, I'm just going to aim the uh, the camera down at the, the effects because I might twiddle with them a little bit so you can see. And I'm just going to record everything I'm doing here uh, uh, on the guitar through Audacity. Audacity, just so you know, is a recording software. Um, it's free to download and use. It doesn't cost you any money. Uh, it's great because you can record stuff and play it back and do loads of tracks and all that kind of stuff. Um, if you've never seen it before, just look up Audacity uh, on the internet and um, you can download it for free. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so, uh, interesting, emulating pedals or emulating preamps, so the Moore preamp, uh, the, the, emu the, emulate the emulation, if that's the right word, uh, that they're doing is probably correct, it just doesn't set, when I tested them out it didn't sound right to me, it's a shame I can't test them in front of you, I just haven't got the money to go and buy loads of pedals and do all that kind of stuff, and nobody's given me stuff, but Moore, if you'd like to give me loads of pedals, I can do and I test them out for you uh, in any way you like, so uh, there you go, anyway, going back to the point is this uh, Golden Plexi uh, Toe City, when I was in that music store and I played this after I played the two Moore preamps, I was completely blown away, uh, I'm not sure if this video comes across the way I wanted it to, but uh, while I was playing and when I was listening back, I thought, oh my god, that sounds fantastic. Um, and believe you me, it does sound, th this sounds better than the Moore preamp, sorry Moore. But, on the other hand, the Moore Baby Bomb, uh, it's a very transparent uh, power amp, it's 30 watts, class D, uh, as you've probably seen in my previous videos, it is a very, very powerful little amplifier. I reckon you could rehearse with this perhaps gig with this. Um, I'm yet to test a, a rehearsal out which I will do next Thursday and I'll let you know how it goes. So anyway, that's that. So um, I think at the end of the day uh, Kemper and Fractal uh, uh, in the next two years are just going to blow two bamps out of the water because that's the way things are going. Um, sorry but we have to we have to move forward, we have to go with these things. Uh, many people are using these amplifiers now, especially some big names and uh, especially going on the road. It's lighter, easier, less to go wrong, all that kind of stuff. But anyway, with that, um, I think I, I think I can I can tell you right now that with the Moore Baby Bomb and the Golden Plexi, that is a kind of a mini amp that you can you can take anywhere, a fly rig even if you like, that you can take anywhere and it will sound good uh, as a basic setup. It will sound brilliant going through pretty much any uh, perhaps two by twelve or four by twelve setup. Not sure about one by twelve might sound fine. Don't know, not tested it on that. But I believe you can take this little rig anywhere and if it costs less than one hundred and fifty. Pounds. Uh, if you like the video, don't forget to uh, subscribe and share and uh, put some comments in the bottom there. Um, next up on this video right now, uh, I'm not going to go away. I'm just going to do one more thing for you. Uh, this is part of the shredding and riffage uh, uh, weekly thing that I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you a couple of little, um, couple of little riff things uh, for you to play around with. You may have heard of them before. You may have seen them before or played them before. But I'm going to show you anyway. Uh, I might do it differently to you. Um, my way might be better. It might not be better. It might be worse. Anyway, I'm going to show you anyway. Uh, and if you're kind of new and you're just picking up the old guitar and you're, you're just learning your way around, this might be helpful for you uh, to learn a couple of little riffs. Because I just do the simple stuff for now. Real simple riffs. A real simple bit of shredding. That's coming up right now. Uh, here. This is a very, very simple piece of riffage um, and sometimes you know people miss all the simple stuff um, and the simple stuff is good right so basically uh, let me show you the 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 riff first and then we'll go from there one more time and if you watched the video last week you could actually include the So what am I doing? Basically, very simple. This is what I'm doing. Is I'm placing my ring finger on the seventh fret on the G string, and I am picking it and bending that note uh, up uh, to the next to the next note here. So I'm making this note sound like this. Like. Okay. And um, yeah, it sounds good, doesn't it? That's that uh, golden plexi tone city. So basically. You're just bending it like that. And once you bend it like that, you get your plectrum and you basically tap uh, the G string on a 12th fret. And as you tap it, you let you, you decrease the tension on the string. So yeah, try it. Put it in your other stuff that you do on a guitar. Um, you can play that pretty much anywhere. Uh, I'm playing it in the key of A. Uh, you can play it pretty much anywhere. So uh, A minor. Okay, so um, another thing you can do, which is pretty cool, um, 
we'll start with you know obviously we'll keep this simple again is that we can use um we can use that same bend but what we'll do is we'll do like a tap harmonic um uh, an octave above that note so let me show you what that is first and again you get that kind of overtone kind of harmonic sound so, great for finishing uh, finishing runs off with great for it really. anyway, so what we do is the same thing is that we take that um, we take the G string uh, on the uh, on the seventh fret uh, with our ring finger we bend it like we did before and then with our other finger uh, it could be any finger it could be this finger or it could be this finger or you know whatever it is whatever thing you decide to use mine's this finger um, haha <laughs> anyway so um, and all I'm doing is once I've bent that note I am tapping uh, I am tapping the the octave of this note which is the 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 on the 19th fret of the G string So one more time. You can do that anywhere, uh, pretty much uh, around the neck of the guitar. So yeah, a couple of simple things. It's all in the shredded and riffage. Um, There's a couple of things. It's easy to do, easy to in implement in whatever it is that you're doing right now. Give it a whirl. You need a little bit of um, a little, little bit of gain to be able to, to accomplish it. Um, not a lot. You can do it on pretty much low gain. If you know, it's just, it's just, um, you know, it, it's just uh, you have to be a little bit more focused when you're doing it uh, with a lower gain. But you'll see great guitar players doing it with very little gain, uh, doing a great job at it. But anyway, uh, hopefully that's um, that's been enlightening to you, and uh, I'll see you in the next video, uh, including uh, some shredding riffage and other guitar hacks. Catch you later. <laughs>